नमस्कार स्वागत है आपका आईबीएन सेवन में मैं आपके साथ पायल भूयन प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी अगले हफ्ते अमेरिका की यात्रा पर जा रहे हैं और इससे पहले उन्होंने अमेरिकन न्यूज चैनल सीएनएन को दिए अपने इंटरव्यू में भारत के चीन और अमेरिका से रिश्तों पर विस्तार से बात की प्रधानमंत्री बनने के बाद दिए अपने पहले इंटरव्यू में नरेंद्र मोदी ने मौजूदा दौर को एशिया का युग करार दिया है और इस बेबाक बातचीत में मोदी ने अलकायदा के खतरों और भारतीय मुसलमानों की देशभक्ति पर बिना किसी शक शोभा से अपनी बात रखी सुनिए भारतीय प्रधानमंत्री की सी के पत्रकार फरीद जकारिया से पूरी बातचीत इस वर्ल्ड एक्सक्लूसिव इंटरव्यू में प्राइम मिनिस्टर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर डूइंग दिस धन्यवाद थैंक यू आफ्टर योर इलेक्शन पीपल हैव बिगन आस्किंग अगेन अ क्वेश्चन दैट हैज बीन एस्क्ड मेनी टाइम्स फॉर द लास्ट टू डेकेड्स व्हिच इज विल इंडिया बी द नेक्स्ट चाइना विल इंडिया बी एबल टू ग्रो एट एट 9% अ ईयर कंसिस्टेंटली एंड ट्रांसफॉर्म इटसेल्फ एंड दस ट्रांसफॉर्म द वर्ल्ड देखिए सी इंडिया डज नॉट नीड टू बिकम एनी थिंग एल्स इंडिया मस्ट बिकम ओनली इंडिया दिस इज अ कंट्री दैट वंस अपॉन अ टाइम वॉज कॉल्ड द गोल्डन बर्ड वी हैव फॉलन फ्रॉम वे वी वर्क बिफोर बट नाउ वी हैव द चांस टू राइज अगेन इफ यू सी द डिटेल्स ऑफ द लास्ट फाइव और टेन सेंचुरीज यू विल सी दैट इंडिया एंड चाइना have grown at similar paces ki bharat aur china hamesha their contributions to global gdp have risen in parallel and fallen in parallel hamesha saman saman raha hai today's era once again belongs to asia ye yug fir se asia ka aaya hai india and china are both growing rapidly together but people would still i think wonder can india achieve the kind of 8 and 9% growth rates that china has done consistently for 30 years and india has only done for a short period pehla mera it is my absolute belief that indians have unlimited talent i have no doubt about our capabilities i have a lot of faith in the entrepreneurial nature of our 1.25 billion people there is a lot of capability and i have a clear road map to channel it china's behavior in the east china seas and the south china seas over the last 2 years has worried many of its neighbors the uh, head of the government of the philippines in vietnam have made very sharp statements worrying about it do you worry about it? भारत की मिट्टी इंडिया इज डिफरेंट इट इज अ कंट्री ऑफ 1.25 बिलियन पीपल हर छोटी मोटी चीज वी कांट रन आवर कंट्री इफ वी गेट वरीड अबाउट एवरी स्मॉल थिंग एट द सेम टाइम वी कांट क्लोज आवर आईज टू प्रॉब्लम्स आंख बंद करके भी नहीं रह सकते वी आर नॉट लिविंग इन द 18th सेंचुरी दिस इज एन एरा ऑफ पार्टनरशिप और हर किसी को हर किसी की मदद लेनी एवरी वन विल हैव टू सीक एंड एक्सटेंड हेल्प म्यूचुअली चाइना इज ऑल्सो अ कंट्री विद एन एंशियंट कल्चरल हेरिटेज और जिस प्रकार से लुक एट हाउ इट इज फोकस्ड ऑन इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट वो भी इट्स हार्डली द साइन ऑफ अ कंट्री दैट वांट्स टू बी आइसोलेटेड वी शुड हैव ट्रस्ट इन चाइनाज अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड हैव फेथ दैट इट वुड एक्सेप्ट ग्लोबल लॉज एंड विल प्ले इट्स रोल in cooperating and moving forward do you look at china and feel that it has been able to develop as fast as it has uh, really the fastest development in in human history because it is an authoritarian government because the government has the power to build great infrastructure to create uh, incentives for investment do you look at that and and, and think to yourself uh um, that that would be that, that there is a price to democracy that you have to do things a little bit more slowly think in duniya mein if china is one example then democratic countries provide another example they have also grown fast you can't say that growth is not possible because of democracy democracy is our commitment it is our great legacy 
a legacy we simply cannot compromise. Democracy is on our DNA. So you don't uh, look at the power of the Chinese government and wish you had some of that authority? See, I've seen the strength of democracy. If there were no democracy, then someone like me, Modi, a child born in a poor family, how would he sit here? This is the strength of democracy. There are many people in the United States uh, and some in India who wish that the United States and India were much closer allies, the world's oldest democracy, the world's biggest democracy. But somehow that has never happened and there have always been these frictions and uh, difficulties. Do you think it is possible for the United States and India to develop a genuinely strategic alliance? I have a one-word answer. Yes. And with great confidence, I say yes. Let me explain. There are many similarities between India and America. If you look at the last few centuries, two things come to light. America has absorbed people from around the world, and there is an Indian in every part of the world. This characterizes both the societies. Indians and Americans have coexistence in their natural temperament. Now, yes, for sure there have been ups and downs in our relationship in the last century. But from the end of the 20th century to the first decade of the 21st century, we have witnessed a big change. Our ties have deepened. India and the United States of America are bound together by history and by culture. These ties will deepen further. So far in your contacts with the Obama administration, you've had several cab cabinet members come here. Do you feel that there is uh, a genuine desire from Washington to try to upgrade the relationship with India substantially? Relations between India and America should not be seen within the limits of just Delhi and Washington. It's a much larger sphere. The good thing is that the mood of both Delhi and Washington is in harmony with this understanding. Both sides have played a role in this. With regard to Russia's actions in Ukraine, India has not been particularly uh, active. Do you, um, how do you view Russia's annexation of the Crimea? Firstly, whatever happened there, innocent people died in a plane accident. That's very saddening. These are not good things for humanity in this age. There's a saying in India that the person who should throw a stone first is the person who has not committed any sins. In the world right now, a lot of people want to give advice, but look within them, and they too have sinned in some way. Ultimately, India's viewpoint is that efforts need to be made to sit together and talk and to resolve problems in an ongoing process. One of the areas that India has um, come onto the, the world scene, or people have read about and heard about it, which has been unfortunate, has been violence against women, this issue of rape. Uh, why is it, you, th you, you think, that uh, there is this problem of, it seems, persistent discrimination and violence against women in India? And what do you think can be done about it? Look. Us political pundits shouldn't tangle ourselves up in knots by searching for the root cause of this problem. More damage is done by statements from political pundits. Dignity of women. Dignity of women is our collective responsibility. There should be no compromise in this matter. There should be no erosion in the law and order situation. We have to revive the family culture in which a woman is respected and considered equal, her dignity encouraged. The main thing here is girl-child education. 
By doing so, the possibility of empowerment will increase. On August 15, my government pushed ahead a movement called Educate the Girl, Save the Girl. Ayman Zawari, the, the head of Al-Qaeda, has issued a, a video and an appeal trying to create an Al-Qaeda really in India. In South Asia, he says, but the message was really directed towards India, and he says that he wants to free Muslims from the oppression they face in Gujarat, in Kashmir. Do you think that, do you worry that something like this could succeed? My understanding is that they are doing injustice towards the Muslims of our country. If anyone thinks Indian Muslims will dance to their tune, they are delusional. Indian Muslims will live for India, they will die for India. They will not want anything bad for India. Why do you think it is that there is this remarkable phenomenon that you have 170 million Muslims, and there seem to be almost no or very few members of Al-Qaeda, even though Al-Qaeda is in Afghanistan, and of course there are many in Pakistan. What is it that has made um, this community not as susceptible? Firstly, I am not the authority for doing a psychological and religious analysis on this. But the question is whether or not humanity should be defended in the world, whether or not believers in humanity should unite. This is a crisis against humanity, not a crisis against one country or one race. So we have to frame this as a fight between humanity and inhumanity, nothing else. A year or two from now, what would you like people to say uh, that these are the things Narendra Modi has managed to accomplish in terms of actions in, in office? See, the biggest thing is that the people of the country have faith. That trust should never break. If I can win the confidence of the people of India, not from my speeches, but by actions, then the power of 1.25 billion Indians will come together to take the country forward. One final question. How do you relax? What, what, what do you enjoy doing when, you, when you're not working? Look, I'm not the not working type. I derive pleasure from my work. Work gives me relaxation too. Every moment I'm thinking of something new making a new plan, new ways to work. In the same way that a scientist draws pleasure from long hours in the laboratory, I draw pleasure in governance, in doing new things and bringing people together. That pleasure is sufficient for me. Do you meditate? Do you do yoga? I'm fortunate that I was introduced to the world of yoga. That has been very useful to me. I always advise everyone to make this a part of their lives. You gave a long speech about the benefits of yoga. Ex explain what you see them as. Thank you, See, sometimes we notice our mind works on one thing, the body on another, and time brings us in conflict. Yoga synchronizes the heart, the mind, and the body. That is yoga.